There's a direct correlation because they have to burn um, the blanket bog to create the habitat that the grouse need, and it's nothing. It's all it's all heather, and it destroys the sphagnum. And you go up there, and the peat's bare. There's hardly any sphagnum. You're really lucky if you find little tiny patches of sphagnum. There's loads of drainage ditches, and you know it's supposed to be a bog. It's just it's heartbreaking. That site is incredibly heavily protected. I don't know if you know, it's a Natura 2000 site, which is the highest level of protection that is possible under the EU. And as well as that, that very Natura 2000 protection, it's got every possible protection that's possible under UK law. It's a site of special scientific interest. It's a special protection area, and it's a special area of conservation. And the thing that it makes me really, really mad, because it's got all that protection, and the government that's supposed to enforce all those protections isn't doing it. So the main thing it makes me feel is like a real sense that we need effective action, that we need to organise to make sure that the government does what it's supposed to be doing. We've long thought that the fact that the bogs are so degraded that they don't fulfil their natural function of holding water must have contributed to the flooding because the, instead of the rain falling and being held, the peat's bare, so the rain falls and it rushes across the surface of the peat um, and down into the little streams and tributaries and floods the colder water. And a couple of years ago, Leeds University did a significant piece of research where they actually did a lot of detailed analysis of how runoff is affected at sites that have been burnt and it found that the runoff in the most severe storm conditions is greatly increased. So that was one significant piece of evidence. And there's a very recent study that's not yet been written up and published, which has been about actually modeling how much the runoff is increased on burnt areas. And it's, it's found that it's something like it increases peak flow in storm conditions by around 10%. And you figure that the 2012 floods increased peak flow by 4.5%. And we begin, so we're beginning to have really hard data that what's going on on Wilshire Moor is contributing massively to flooding in the valley. The whole reason that the moor hasn't been restored to the way it was before the Industrial Revolution did all its damage is because it's being used as a source of massive income from intensive grouse shooting. If that profit motive wasn't there, the more there'd be no reason to degrade it. We know there's going to be extreme rainfall, but we don't know that it has to flood. If we can manage the uplands properly, there's all kinds of reasons to suspect that we won't flood.